Okay. I would like to thank the organizer. Uh, this is uh, my first, maybe no, my second participation in a conference in Algeria. So thank you very much. Uh, and the talk will be on absorbing ideals in competitive rings. Well, maybe uh, the title, I change it a little bit in the last minute. I do want to start talking about all different generalization. Then, uh, you know, there are many of them. And I decided only to focus on some uh, absorbing ideals. OK, before I start, I would like to share with you this result. OK, when the polynomial ring over uh, is a principal ideal ring. OK, when you look at this question, you will assume this has been answered long time ago by, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, some mathematician or algebraist. This is a very, I mean, I will think of it classical question. And the first surprise that this question has complete answer uh, recently, whatever were recently to me, I came across uh, uh, this paper maybe uh, two months ago, and it was published in 2018. So we're talking about four years old. Uh, everything is relative, but if you ask Ayman Badawi, I think this is the most beautiful result I've seen uh, maybe in the last 10 years or more. And look at the answer. The principal ID, I mean the polynomial ring over a commutative ring, is a principal ideal ring if and only if R is ring isomorphic to a finite product of fields. Wow. <laughs> Every time I come across this result, I really get excited. And this result uh, by uh, Henry, I'm not sure about the names, Henry, Zola, and Lobis. Uh, and Raddy, uh, they gave this complete characterization when is the polynomial ring is a principal idea ring. Because, you know, like all of us in abstract algebra, we know if F is a field, then the polynomial ring over a field is always a principal ideal domain. But now, if you like try to take, uh, you know, uh, polynomial rings with two variables, let's see F is a field, and you add two variables like X and Y, then we know this is not a principal ideal uh, ring. And <laughs> by staring at this result, Clear. I mean, you don't have to write anything. So there are many things that we try to prove. They are not the principal idea rings. Can be done by only staring, staring at this result. And then you're done. Because, you know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so this is my celebration. And uh, this has nothing to do with my talk, maybe later on. Uh, but this I just share with you the most, you know, things that I really, really uh, like. I cannot describe the feeling uh, about this result. It's so beautiful. Uh, this result is about six pages, the proof, and rely, of course, on other uh, results. Okay, I go back to my talk now. Okay, 
So here is the my talk. Let R be a commutative ring with one, and I be a proper ideal. Then, uh, well, I give the reference ten, and here the reference ten is by Ayman Badawi, the speaker. What do we mean with two absorbing ideal? Uh, whenever you have A, B, C in I, for some A, B, C, uh, it's supposed to be in R. Even I start here, I don't know why I did that. Whenever A, B, C in I, for some A, B, C in R, not in I, then A, B in I, or B, C in I, or A, C in I. And over the this is uh, res I mean this two absorbing ideal was introduced in 2007 or eight and uh, in the past 15 years there has been consider considerable attention to two absorbing ideal I just give you the references at the beginning I just you know look at them like uh, here is some uh, factorization has to do with absorbing here is n absorbing mn absorbing uh, weekly uh, two absorbing uh, one absorbing weekly two absorbing uh, there are many uh, result on absorbing ideals okay that's enough about the references okay whenever you have a proper ideal of a commutative ring r then the radical of i as usual we write radical denote the radical uh, ideal of r and what's the radical ideal of i it's the, you know, the intersection of all prime ideals over I. And uh, here is a definition of uh, uh, strongly, sorry, here. Maybe I should give you this one before. Remember, two absorbing ideal was introduced by me. And then later on, me and uh, David Anderson we introduced n absorbing ideal of commutative rings. What does n absorbing mean? Whenever you have n plus one elements in R and the product of these element in I, then n of the AIs whose product is in I. So like when you say four absorbing ideal, what does that uh, mean? Whenever you have uh, like uh, five elements in R and the product of these five elements in I, then you should be able to find four elements out of these five where the product is in I. And of course, maybe I should tell you where this, I mean, this is generalized prime ideals. Why? Because all of us know the definition of a prime ideal. The prime ideal, now you can call them one absorbing ideal. Because the prime ideal, whenever you have a product of two elements in I, then one of them has to be in I. So a prime ideals are just one absorbing uh, 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 ideal. Okay, uh, what is a strongly N absorbing? Remember the definition of N absorbing uh, has to do with the elements. Can we extend the definition to ideals? What do I mean with that? Whenever you have N plus one product, product of N plus one ideals in I for some ideals of R, then a product of n of the ai's is contained in i so it is clear that strongly n absorbing is n absorbing 
and still till this minute, we don't have a complete answer for the converse. What do I mean the converse? Does an absorbing ideal imply strongly in absorbing? And also, this is, uh, uh, you know, for prime ideals, all of us know that. Uh, you can characterize prime ideals in terms of ideals. How? Whenever you have a product of two ideals in I, then one of them has to be in I. So, uh, in some cases, uh, in absorbing will imply strongly in absorbing, but not uh, always. Anyway, you're going to see that now. In this paper, uh, 2011, we have these three conjectures. If I is an absorbing ideal of a commutative ring, then if you take the radical of I to the power n, that has to be a subset of I. And the second conjecture, if I is an absorbing ideal, then I has to be strongly an absorbing ideal. If I is, and conjecture number three, if I is an absorbing ideal of a commutative ring R, then Ix is an absorbing ideal of uh, the polynomial ring. Of course, if you look at conjecture number three, this is we try to generalize the prime ideals because we know if I is a prime ideal of a commutative ring, then uh, Ix is a prime ideal of the polynomial uh, ring here. Okay, uh, so this conjecture one, conjecture two, con No, it means the radical of I times the radical. Yes, radical of I multiplied n times. Yes, yes, yeah. And it has to be the same n. Like if I is 2 absorbing, then if I take the radical of I square, it will stay a subset of I. Okay. And... Yes, product, the product. No, I mean, like, you know, uh, ideals, product of ideals. You know what that means. Yeah. Yeah, product of ideals. Okay, so these are the three conjectures. Okay, here is, uh, we have uh, conjecture number one solved. And uh, this, the proof, what conjecture one? If I is an absorbing ideal of a commutative ring, then if you take the radical of I to the power N, then it is an I. Again, uh, N here is mean the, you know, the multiplication of ideals. You take the radical of I, you multiply it N times. Uh, this will be a subset of I. And this result was approved by Chow and Walker, and uh, the paper appeared in 2020. Okay, so conjecture one is done. However, we have uh, Donadzi. He gave uh, uh, a different proof for the same conjecture. And this one here appeared in 2018. Uh, this paper was uh, on the in the in the waiting list for about two years because I followed these two papers in Journal of Commutative Algebra. It was in the wait on the waiting list. Uh, it took them two years to appear in print. Uh, 
uh, anyway, they were in very much on the same in the same time, and they were not aware of. And I know that for sure, they were not aware of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the work of each other. So conjecture one is done. We go to conjecture two. What is conjecture two? If I is an absorbing ideal then I has to be strongly an absorbing ideal. Remember, an absorbing ideal, uh, the, the definition in terms of element, where strongly in absorbing the definition in terms of ideals. And we know strongly in will imply in. The question is whether in absorbing imply strongly. And I remind you also with conjecture number three, it's written here. Okay, in the first paper in 2007, I prove that conjecture uh, number two, which is in absorbing, um, imply strongly in absorbing only for n equal two. However, uh, Conjecture two and three, these two conjectures, were verified in 2011 when R is a proofer domain, not in general. You know, proofer domain meaning uh, R is a proofer domain if every uh, finitely generated ideal is invert invertible. Another definition, whenever you localize R at the prime ideal, you will have a valuation domain. Uh, in the same paper, the same paper, 2011, we prove conjecture number three when N equal two. So if I is N absorbing ideal of a commutative ring, then uh, if I is two, absorbing ideal, then Ix is two absorbing ideal. That's the best we could do in 2011, where conjecture two and three are always true if my rank is a proofer domain. Okay, reminding you with conjecture two and conjecture three again, uh, Laraji, uh, he wrote this paper in 2017, and he proved that conjecture two and three are valid for any positive integer when R is arithmetic rank. Remember that we prove conjecture two and three for a proofer domain. Uh, arithmetic rank more general. So every proofer domain is arithmetic ring, but not every arithmetic ring is a proofer domain. So he proved conjecture two and three for a larger a class of rings. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, here in 50, I, it seems I... I mean by the same, uh, uh, Laraji. Uh, I think he's in King Saud or uh, or in King Fahed University. Uh, maybe some of you heard the name. 50 here refer to the same paper. Uh, what he uh, did in, the, in this paper, he showed that if I is a strongly in absorbing ideal of R, uh, sorry, yeah, if, if, the, if Ix is an absorbing ideal of the polynomial ring, then I is a strongly an absorbing ideal of R. So what that mean, if you prove conjecture number three, then conjecture number two is a true. So what you need to prove in general, that if i is n absorbing then ix is an absorbing ideal of the polynomial ring if you can prove that then conjecture true 
uh, two will be true. Okay? So can keep in mind conjecture three imply conjecture two. Okay. Uh, give you definition of a U-ring. What do I mean with U-ring? Here is the definition that whenever you have an ideal contained in a finite union of ideals, then uh, then uh, then this ideal has to be contained in one of these ideals. So if like I is contained in I1 union, I2 union, IM, then I has to be inside one of the uh, II's, one of these ideals. And here uh, Hizam and Smack, I think they are Tunisian uh, mathematician. Uh, they uh, they prove the following result. Before I do that, look what we have the picture. Uh, Anderson and I, we prove conjecture two and three for a proofer domain. Laraji, he proved conjecture two and three for arithmetic, which is a larger class of ring. U rings is a larger ring than arithmetic. Every proofer domain uh, is a U-ring. Okay? So, here is what they did. If R is a U-ring, then conjecture 2 holds. What is conjecture 2? It means uh, if I is inabsorbing, then I has to be strongly inabsorbing for Uring. And that's also in the same year, almost 2017. Okay, uh, let me remind you with this definition, classical 1978. All of us, maybe undergraduate or a graduate, we study valuation domain. There is another class of domain introduced in 1978 they call them a pseudo valuation domain. And these pseudo valuation domain are generalization of uh, valuation domain. Uh, so every valuation is pseudo valuation, but not every pseudo valuation is a valuation domain. There are many definitions, the best definition combining. Uh, this paper in 1978 and the other one in 1980 the best definition I use that uh, an integral domain we call it pseudo valuation domain if R has exactly one maximal ideal where uh, M column this mean by the way like uh, this notation M colon M. What does this mean? It means if you uh, if R is an integral domain with the quotient field K, then this set here will be all the elements X in K where XM is a subset of M. Okay, maybe you've seen this. And uh, also I need the content the content of F. If you have uh, a polynomial uh, in Rx, okay, so my definition of pseudo valuation domain end, now I'm talking about the content of uh, a polynomial of a polynomial inside a polynomial ring. The content of F is the ideal generated by the coefficient a n up to a zero and we call the ring uh, Gaussian Gaussian ring if the content of the product is equal to the content of F times the content of the second okay 
Uh, 57 here mean uh, the same authors uh, smack, smash, I think smack and hizam. Uh, they prove the following result. If R is a Uring and Gaussian, then conjecture three hold. Well, if conjecture three hold, what does that mean? That means conjecture two hold. And they prove if N is bigger or equal to two, and if your uh, R is a pseudo valuation domain, and you have a proper ideal where the radical of I is not maximum, then I is in absorbing if and only if Ix is an absorbing ideal of Rx. Okay? So if you have a pseudo valuation domain and you choose an ideal I where the radical of I is not the maximal ideal, then uh, conjecture number uh, 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 three is uh, valid. If I is in absorbing, then Ix is in absorbing ideal of the polynomial ring. And that means conjecture 2 also valid by Laraji. Uh, La okay. Let me... Okay, let me move... Uh, Give you remind you this definition is due to David Dobbs and uh, myself. Uh, divided ring. What do we mean with divided ring? Uh, whenever you choose a prime ideal Q, and you choose an element X outside Q, then a Q has to be a subset of X R. And then in 2001, we defined Dubs and Badawi, we defined uh, locally divided rings. What's locally divided mean? Whenever you localize R at the prime ideal P, then you have a divided ring. So locally divided, the def you need uh, for the next result, you need a uh, locally divided uh, rings. Okay. Ciao. This is very recent, 2022, in Journal of Algebra. On in this paper, he proved... Whoops. Uh, how can I get this menu away? Okay. Yeah. He proved that if your ring is locally divided ring, then conjecture two and three hold. So now conjecture two and three hold uh, when your ring is locally divided. And what does that mean? Remember uh, that uh, in the previous paper in 2017, uh, Hizam and uh, they prove uh, some result on pseudo valuation domain. And I should mention that pseudo valuation domain are locally divided rings. So this class of rings is. Uh, is larger than pseudo valuation uh, uh, larger than pseudo valuation domain. Uh, so every pseudo valuation domain is uh, locally divided ring, but there are many locally divided rings that are not. So as you see, there are some improvement on these two conjectures because conjecture one is done. Two and three, uh, still, uh, we brew, uh, this is the most recent one, 2022, 
and we prove it for locally divided rings, a larger uh, class. Okay, now this here, uh, the definition, uh, this is also in 2020, uh, they define AF dimension of a ring. What is an AF dimension of a ring? Is the smallest positive integer n such that every proper ideal of R can be written as a finite product of n absorbing ideal. If no such n exists, then the AF dimension will be infinity. A ring R is an FAF ring if AF dimension is less than infinity. So this is uh, a paper appeared in Communication in Algebra 2020. Here they try, okay, let me tell you, I mean, briefly, what, I mean, what they're trying to do here. All of us learn that every Dedekind domain is a product of uh, prime ideals. And uh, this is in a way similar, instead of a prime ideal, they use n absorbing ideal. Okay? So the AF dimension is the smallest positive integer n, where every proper ideal can be written as a finite product of n absorbing ideal. For n equal to, you're going to see, Okay, here is a result. Here is a result of FAF rings. Remember, FAF rings mean the AF dimension is less than infinity. Okay? If you take, and this is in fact, you know, a very practical uh, example. Uh, look at number one. If you take D, B, uh, an, uh, an integer, but is not zero and is not one, and it has to be square free. And you take this ring, then every proper ideal in this ring can be written uh, as a finite product of two absorbing ideals. Every proper ideal of this ring can be written as a product of two absorbing ideal. That's why the AF dimension is two. If R is a finite direct product of field, then R and the polynomial rings over R are FAF rings. Okay. Uh, the same paper in 2022, uh, Chow proved that if your ring is FAF ring, remember what FAF ring mean, uh, you should be able to find a smallest positive integer n so that every proper ideal is a finite product of n absorbing ideals. Then both conjectures are valid. So he proved it that he proved that conjecture two and three are valid for uh, locally divided rings and also for FAF rings. Okay. Maybe some of you heard of the name Benis and Fahed. I know, I think he's in Muhammad Al Khamis University in Morocco. They study in uh, rings where every two absorbing ideal is a prime. We know every prime is two absorbing, but the question is. But, but, and we know not every two absorbing is a prime. So in this paper, 
this study the characterized rings were uh, too absorbing is the same as a prime and uh, a ring with this property they call it two a b ring so what two a b ring mean every two absorbing ideal is a prime and this is the characterization they gave R is a 2AB ring, meaning uh, every two absorbing ideal is a prime. It means this, R uh, has exactly one maximal ideal, and the prime ideals are linearly ordered by inclusion. And I M equal P for every two absorbing ideal I and every minimal prime ideal P over I. All these conditions are equivalent. Or you can read number three. So one is equivalent to two, equivalent to three. What I'm trying to tell you, uh, they gave a complete answer for the question, uh, what, what kind of rings do we have where every two absorbing uh, is a prime? Okay. And then, uh, this is a preprint. Uh, Najib Mahdu in Morocco, I think they are... Mo they generalize the definition of two AB ring to N AB ring. What do you think? A commutative ring is called N AB ring if every N absorbing is a prime. And the surprising thing, they come up with the same uh, result. So there is no difference between two. You can let N be anything and you come up with the same result that uh, Benice uh, achieved. Uh, early on uh, two a b ring this is exactly the same result uh, you know so two you, you it does not have to be two it can be anything okay and maybe i will uh, share this with you tf T A F ring. What does TAF ring mean? Mean um, every ideal is a finite product of two absorbing ideal. Okay, and this paper appeared in 2018. And again, this is a very good question. Why? They try to do something like uh, Dedekind domain. Every Dedekind domain is a, a um, in, in a Dedekind domain, every ideal is a product of uh, uh, prime ideals. Here, instead of a prime ideals, they put two absorbing ideal. Okay, and they achieve the following result. Uh, you can read this, but this is the one here. What does it say? It says that... Uh, oh. Okay, let's uh, uh, stop here for a minute. And this is my small... A contribution to this theorem and my contribution is by staring please read these three condition the following are equivalent the polynomial ring is T a T taf ring what's the polynomial ring is taf ring mean every proper ideal can be written as a finite product of two absorbing ideals this is equivalent to num to C. Look at C. R is a finite direct product of fields. 
Okay, for God's sake, let's stop for a minute here. Uh, I just told you my favorite result in the last 10 years that Rx is a principal ID ring if and only if R is isomorphic to a finite direct product of, uh, of fields. So if you stare at this result and the, the result I shared with you at the beginning, what you, you conclude? Rx has to be, I can add one more condition. The following are equivalent. Rx is a principal ID ring. It seems the authors, uh, because this paper published in 2018, and that result I just shared with you appeared in 2018. So they, they were, I, I don't think, uh, I'm writing a survey article, by the way, now, and uh, I just uh, made this observation that we can add one more condition to, the, to this theorem. And of course, uh, I'm not adding anything just by staring. You stare at this result and you stare at the, uh, the early result and you come up with what I just told you. I'm not adding anything new, just putting things together. Okay. Uh, yeah, here is, by the way, the complete reference to that result. Uh, I shared with you when is Rx a principal ideal? It appeared, oh, in 2017, not 18, in fact. And I mentioned they proved the following cerebrizing result. Uh, I don't know. I mean, as I told you, everything is relative. Uh, for me, that was like, wow, wow, wow. Whenever I see this result. And why? Because I assume this question been solved long time ago, not in 2017. Uh, and, and the answer is surprising, too. Uh, anyway, I, uh, here I, I just told you, you know, you can add uh, this result. Here is it. Uh, here, I can add D. Uh, to the previous result uh, on uh, TAF ring. Okay, uh, maybe uh, there is no need to go. I can go more, uh, but I think that's enough. And uh, I stop here, and I really thank you uh, for inviting me, and, uh, uh, and I thank the organizer. I stop here.